Why don't GMs ever say check and OTB because you're supposed to be silent? At the at this classic level when kids play, sometimes kids will play a move and say check very loudly. Uh, actually, I'll give you a story. So I think my stepfather had a position something like this. Okay, so he had a position like this in a in a in a, in a blitz game. He was playing the Marshall Chess Club. It was a game thirty, and uh, both players are very low on time. They were not using a digital clock because, of course, the time that we had analog clocks. So they're using a digital clock, and he was playing against another guy who I think was like twenty three hundred. And the guy played the move like Queen F three, and he very loudly was like check very loudly. And my stepfather panicked. He freaked out, and he moved the king to H four rather than taking the queen. So these sorts of things do happen. But it's considered a little bit of bush league. Like he just he very loudly is like check very loudly, and my stepfather freaked out and played like king h4 instead of taking the queen. Of course, both players had seconds on the clock. They didn't know exactly what was going on because they were using an analog clock. But these sorts of things, uh, these sorts of things do happen. So uh, I I don't remember who it was against, but he told me the story where like he the guy is just very loudly yelled check. Another way that another thing that can happen sometimes is like you get some winning position now this is just a queen versus queen so ignore it but imagine they're like black is like two pawns like a h5 f4 g5 or three pawns black is pawns and like a guy goes queen c8 he's like check very loudly and you just auto touch the queen because you hear check and then just like that you lose your queen on c2 so those are a couple of the things that happen in over the board chess when you're playing like someone might try and do that but it's considered a little bit of bush league and top players won't do that but uh, it does happen in like uh, more like game the the quicker games that are played at some of the chess clubs between like master and international master players. So yeah, that that's that's what it is like check and then you like you touch the king you're like he said check you touch the king you're like oh wait but my queen's hanging so uh, it does happen from time to time but generally you don't do it at the top levels you don't you don't it's like clapping during a three free throw I guess you could say that yeah I mean it, that is Levy's level but. They don't do i feel like nowadays people are much more proper when they play so levy for example probably has never had that happen but like if you go back like 10 15 20 years ago these this sort these sorts of tricks would occur all the time without a doubt without a doubt yeah no my stepfather is like a fide master so he's played a lot of tournaments over the years and in the old days when you play with analog clocks you did not know how much time you have so if your flag is hanging you guys you don't know if you have like a minute on the clock or you have like five seconds so like if someone plays a move really fast they yell check like your instinct just takes over because you don't know the exact time you have now of course we use digital clocks all the time so you know precisely how much time you have but if you if you don't know how much time you have and your flag is hanging that's like it can happen it, it definitely can happen so I know everybody here is is young so they don't uh chess let me find it chess clock analog so you got you guys see this image right you, you see this image here you see this flag now here for example this clock you can tell that you have about a minute on the clock now imagine however this red hand is even closer and the flag is literally hanging you don't know how much time you have here you could have five seconds you could have 30 seconds you don't know how much time you have here with this red flag so in the old days when you were playing with these clocks you never actually knew how much time you had when you were below 60 seconds which i know nowadays you're like how can you play chess not knowing the exact time you have but in the old days this is how it used to go so uh also the other thing is you could also hit that you could hit the button really really hard and try to like try to get the flag to fall as well like th this this did used to happen so this is where the phrase flagging comes from because in the old days when we had the analog clocks there was this little flag here that would fall so uh that's 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 how it goes but here for example you can see the little 60 right above the flag so you can tell you have more than a minute but once it gets inside that last 60 you don't know how much time you have you just don't know so in the old days uh we basically play without knowing and I I played many games when I was very young with analog chess clocks and you did not know how much time you had so if you look at this clock you have no idea do you have 10 seconds do you have five seconds do you have 30 seconds like you have no idea how much time you have so like when you're playing a game with this clock if somebody if somebody is like is like yells check you're like you freak out because like if you have 30 seconds you can just chill and obviously relax take take a couple se seconds to like reset your mind but right here you cannot tell do you have five seconds do you have 20 seconds do you have um, do you have like 60 50 seconds you don't know here you just don't know how is this the best choice back then because you guys contrary to what people people think we didn't always have technology we didn't all have always have these digital instruments you know if you go back 2000 years you, you could you you would use an abacus to do math in fact where is my abacus uh I don't have my abacus in my room here but you know back in the old days it's just like how do people do math with like abacus instead of using a instead of like having calculators like duh because we didn't have technology 3,000 years ago so we had to actually use the abacus instead of a instead of using a using a calculator oh all oh, oh, right that's also you could also use sand back then right you, you could use sand what is an abacus good lord you people are too young 
I, I think I'm gonna quit streaming soon. You guys, you guys are ridiculous. Seriously, how does nobody know what an abacus is? Wait, what the heck? Is... I don't know what this is. What is this? Wait, I'm sorry. What is this? This looks like a shoe measure. What the heck is this? Uh, someone in chat want to tell me what this is? Isn't this what you use to measure your shoes or something? I'm too young. This is a slide ruler. I've never seen one of these before, actually. This this is a slide a slide rule. Okay. Okay. I've never seen one of these. No, I have not actually. Bullet Brawl, new titled Bullet Arena, last Saturday of every month at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Big shout out to chess.com. You know, there was a site, an unnamed site that had a very prominent uh, event once a month. And finally, chess.com is here to take away their lunch. Introducing Bullet Brawls and new arena options. As a fan or as a player of top level chess, whether you need a weekend chess fix or are looking for pure bullet competition, chess.com has the event for you. Can't agree more. We're bringing another regularly scheduled tournament for title players to chess.com on the last Saturday of every month. Bullet Brawls are coming this Saturday, January 28th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific with a $2,500 prize fund. The format is a two-hour arena with a one plus zero time control. Much like Title Tuesday for Blitz and Arena Kings for streaming, Bullet Brawls will give title players access to a regularly scheduled bullet tournament. The prize fund, which includes a cool grand for first place, should look familiar to those who play or follow Title Tuesday. Wow. Okay, this looks great, by the way. So, uh, as we know, Title Tuesday is the premier event. In my opinion, it is the best event online. Everybody plays it. The world champion plays it. The most famous streamer plays it. Uh, the most famous YouTuber plays it. You have a lot of people who are playing in it, so it's a big event. Um, along with this new event, we are also bringing some score-based arena formats to chess.com, which will be readily available for all players alongside our standard arena tournaments. In our standard arenas, players are matched based on their rating. In the score-based format, as the name implies, players are matched based on their score in the arena to that point. Score-based pairing means pure competition, as players can help themselves not only by continuing to win games, but also by directly preventing their rivals from doing the same. We will continue to offer rating-based arenas as well if you prefer to see how many points you can pile up against players of a similar rating. Bullet Brawls will be using the same score base, or sorry, Bullet Brawls will be using the score-based arena format. We hope to see our titled Bullet Specialists, such as the most famous streamer in the world, and other titled players competing on January 28th. So the prizes are $1,000 first prize, $750 second prize, $350 third prize, $200 fourth prize, fifth prize, $100. Top Woman gets $100 bucks too. Very, very nice. That is fantastic. So uh, that is coming up, I guess, January 28th. I assume I'll be playing in it because, of course, I can't not be playing in it. Uh, so really, really good to see Chess.com stepping stepping up once again uh, and competing with a certain other site. And the one event that they had that I think Chess.com definitely did not have. So really, really good stuff to see. Uh, and big shout out to Chess.com. However, that being said, I hope they do fix their site because the site is kind of causing a lot of problems.